Hello friends, this video on classification of elements part 28 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 27. So we have to explain the fact that first enthalpy, anion enthalpy of sodium is lower than magnesium, but second ion enthalpy of enthalpy of magnesium of, 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 is higher than that of sodium. Of sodium. So let's first write sodium and magnesium configuration. So sodium is uh, 11, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. And magnesium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. So let's compare the first ionization enthalpy of sodium and magnesium. So this guy has only one electron here if it lose one electron right it can become very stable this guy has two electrons to lose so this guy will lose easily right so first ionization enthalpy so i'll say sodium is less than magnesium because sodium is ready to lose right sodium is ready to lose electron first electron why because if it lose one electron it will become stable now if you talk about second enthalpy. In second enthalpy, in second case, if you lose two electrons, this will become unstable because it will become P5, it will become highly unstable. So sodium will not like to lose two electrons. But magnesium, if it lose two electrons, it will become very stable. So magnesium will love to lose two electrons, but sodium will not love to lose two electrons. Why? Because if sodium lose two electrons, it will become unstable, but magnesium lose two electrons, it will become stable. So that's why magnesium will have higher second ionization enthalpy as compared to sodium. Sorry, sodium will have higher second ionization enthalpy as compared to magnesium. Correct? It's all about getting stable. Sodium is happy to lose one electron to become stable. So it has low first ionization enthalpy. Magnesium is happy to lose two electrons to become stable. So magnesium will have small second ionization enthalpy. What are the factors due to which the ionization enthalpy of main group elements tend to decrease down a group? So we see if you go down the group, the ionization enthalpy goes down. Why? First thing is the atomic size increase. If you go down the group. And the second is the shielding effect. So both are responsible for decrease in the ionization enthalpy because the atomic size is increasing and so the problem is if you put on the group I'll show you like this so in this case the electrons is tightly held by this neutron in this case little less tightly held because the distance is more and shielding effect is there in this case electron is all the more less tightly held by this neutron right why because they are more shielding effect and the size is more this can easily come out taking out this is little difficult as compared to this and taking this out is all the more difficult the question says which of the following pair would have more negative electron gain enthalpy that means more energy is liberated more energy is liberated liberated more energy is liberated when you add electron so let's say oxygen oxygen is 8 atomic number and the confusion will be 1s2 2s2 2p4 and then we have fluorine atomic number 9 1s2 2s2 2p5 now in this case if you add one electron it becomes 2p6 so it becomes stable on one electron addition right but this guy is not having the oxygen is not having any extra benefit if you add one extra electron so this will liberate more energy if you add extra electron so i can say that fluorine is the one which has more negative electron gain enthalpy correct because if you add 
electron to fluorine becomes stable so it has one extra reason to becomes to add one electron so it will liberate more energy when extra electron is added the second is fluorine or chlorine so let's see fluorine is 9 chlorine is 17 so fluorine is uh, 1s2 2s2 2p5 chlorine is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p5 now in both case if you add extra electron one electron both become stable because half filled half filled or full, full filled full filled but there's a cache here fluorine is very small in size please note this because there are so many behaviors which changes because of the very small size of fluorine since fluorine is very small in size you add extra electron to fluorine it will ripple because the size is very small right the, the see there are only uh, s and p orbitals here the orbitals are small everything is small so this extra electron will be repelled but in chlorine size is decent enough so the extra electrons won't be repelled right so chlorine will liberate more energy when you add it please note this discrepancy is happening only because the size of fluorine is very very small so next question is what is the difference between electron gain enthalpy and electronegativity i think we have discussed this electron gain enthalpy is nothing but uh, it is energy actually which is uh, uh, liberated when uh, an electron is added to an atom right it can be endothermic exothermic but electronegativity is nothing but uh, an atom in a chemical compound they attract shared pair of electrons for example you have hcl so hydrogen gets slightly positive charge chlorine gets slightly negative charge so this chlorine attracts electron more the shared pair in water also if you see here uh, oxygen attracts uh, electron more to water itself in the water right these these kind of thing is called uh, electronegativity when a uh, atom in a shared pair in a compound attracts the shared pair of electron to itself that is electronegativity and Electron gain enthalpy is nothing but the energy which is liberated when uh, electron is added, liberated or is it required to add one electron to a atom. So the question says, what do you expect the first ionization enthalpy of two isotopes uh, to be same or different? So isotope is something which has same number of proton same number of electron only the neutron is different right so that means ionization first ionization energy will be same for isotopes because this all depends on the if you see the ionization energy it depends how strong the nucleus or the proton can attract electron so the proton is same electron is same the whole chemistry is same right the neutron doesn't impact much so this will be same what are the major difference between metals and non-metals i think we have discussed this a lot uh, metals are ductile malleable good conductor sonorous non-metal doesn't have all this property metals uh, lose electron and non-metals gain electron and this is the main thing but they apart from this they are hard these guys are brittle they are sonorous they are non-sonorous so we have done all this a lot so i'll not spend much time on this use the period table to identify all these things so identify electrons, uh, atoms or elements with five electrons in the outermost shell. So five electrons are something in the outermost cell. Sorry, outermost subshell. So it be something like this. NS2, NP5, something of this fashion. Right? Because this will have five. 
So it is something which has seven valence electrons. So I have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. These elements will have five electrons in the outermost shell. Okay. So I'll write here fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Element that would tend to lose two electrons. Two electrons they lose are these guys because they have two extra electrons. If they lose electrons, they become stable. So this is my answer. Tendency to gain two electrons. So people who are deficit of two electrons are these guys. If they add two electrons to these people, they become stable. So they are the one who have tendency to gain two electrons. Group having metals, non-metals, liquid as well as gas at room temperature. So these are group 17 actually, right here. Group 17 or something which has uh, metals also, which has non-metals also, metalites also, gas also, uh, and liquid. They are all liquid at room temperature. Group 17 is the one which I So looking at the periodic table, we can actually uh, talk about the properties of the elements. So the question says uh, the reactivity I mean the group 1 elements I say lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium is like this. The reactivity increases right but for fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine is this the part. Why is the case? See in this case my group 1 elements, group 1 elements the reactivity is because they lose electron and here the reactivity is because they gain electron that is the difference so in this case if the electron if the atom becomes bigger they can lose electron easily right if you see in this case the atom size is increasing okay so bigger the electron easier it is to lose one electron right so this can come easily out but in this case the reactivity is because they gain electron because they are non-metals they are metals so smaller the electron they can attract the external electron easily bigger the electron the nucleus won't have much power to attract electron it's all about attraction right this is a big uh, company and you know, a lot of red tape so it won't be able to attract new employee but this guy um, is a big company with a lot of red tape, they can easily lose electron employees. Right? So if the affinity between the manager and the employee is very good, the manager is very good, very strong, it can attract employee from the company also. The company is small, but the manager has very huge power. No, the manager is good, but there are a lot of shells, the company is big, so it's not able to attract employees. It's very, very simple funda. The same thing which we have in our day-to-day -day life. The Atom is big, it can lose electron easily. So this way the atom size is increasing, so the reactivity is increasing. The atom is small, it can attract other atom easily. So in this case, the reactivity increases in this fashion. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.